Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Air Science. I want to look at what's been going on for the last couple of days, wind-wise. See if you can remember what's going on this week. So maybe this weekend it wasn't super cold. Into Monday it wasn't super cold. And then Monday night it got it got really breezy around 5 or 6 o'clock. It was gusting like 40 here at my place. And I'm sure it was the same up there. This is a visualization of the wind around then. So here's like Ontario right here, Pulaski is right about here. So after we got that big gust, since then, it's been cold, right? So this is air coming like out of Canada over us hitting Pulaski, right? And I live just maybe down here a little bit. So that might seem like, okay, that's an obvious thing, but we got air coming out of Canada and it's been cold, right? Um, if I went back, I don't know how quickly I can do this because these Chromebooks run this thing pretty slow. Let's see if I went back to like Sunday, how much does it change? Not so much. Let's try going back one more day. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah, there we go. So before that. We had air coming up out of the south. And what was it like? Well, over the weekend, it was a little bit warmer. Now, I know it wasn't like warm, like warm, warm, like summer warm, but seasonally, it was warmer than it normally is, right? And that's because air, look where this air is coming from, coming up from Florida, coming up from the Gulf, working its way up the coast, and then hitting blast sky. Warmer air. So warmer air comes out of the south where it's warm, no duh. Colder air comes out of the north where it's cold, no duh, right? But it sounds like, like okay, maybe I'm being condescending, but sometimes these weather patterns are like it's tough to see the big picture when you just say oh the weather here today is this right when you start to think about the idea that we live in one part of a large system then we can start to wrap our heads around how these weather systems work and how we can predict weather how things change seasonally here's what's going on this morning um there's a nor'easter upon us so we've noticed we finally got a little bit of snow i don't know if you guys did up here i did but only like an inch or so. But this is a nor'easter, this spinning thing right here, low pressure center, and it's pulling air off the ocean. So maybe we'll notice that the air is a little bit more humid if you go outside today. It's not like, it won't be that like super dry cold that comes out of Canada. It might be like a more humid cold that you're feeling, especially as this thing works its way up the coast a little bit more. Um, I haven't actually checked the news this morning, but from like southern New York, Pennsylvania, through the like northern Appalachians through here, we're supposed to really get hammered by snow from the system, from all that wet air coming off of the ocean. So, okay, maybe that's a lot to throw at you, but we're going to be unpacking meteorology bit by bit by bit by bit by bit for a while. It's going to take us quite a bit to work through this unit. So, we'll begin with air masses, and that's keeping it simple. This is the, the premise behind um, what I just talked about. And then we got to like go deeper and complicate it and go deeper and complicate it and go deeper and complicate it. It's going to, it's going to, this is weather, weather can be intimidating, but let's keep it simple and just say, okay, have you noticed that some days are a little colder than normal? Like it was this week. Suddenly it was cold. Guess where that air comes from? The North where it's cold. And when that air comes, it brings the properties that that of the of that area, right? Some days are a little warmer than normal. Guess where that area comes from? Whoa. The south. Where it is warmer. And again, it brings its properties with us. So if you've noticed that, or if you notice that as I did my little spiel here at the beginning, you really have the basis for air masses figured out. That's that's it. All we're really going to talk about is air cold or warm and or is it and is it wet or dry. Then you got it. Okay, so what is an air mass? Here's the definition. A body of air with uniform with relatively uniform temperature and humidity. Moisture. All right, so a big hunk of air, a big blob of air. What's being sucked off the ocean right now? I don't know, close this thing. What's being sucked off the ocean right now is this big blob of air that's moving over 
the whole Northeast and bringing with it its characteristics of what it's like out there in the ocean. Oh, this is the wrong day. Sorry. There's the nor'easter. Bringing its characteristics of what it's like over there in the ocean off of Nova Scotia up here. It's cold and wet. So we're getting cold and wet air. It's going to be a cold and wet day. Um, so all we really have to figure out is, are they... This is like the classification system we use. This is going to like look like it's fancy, but it's really this simple. Are they warm or cold? Or some are very cold. You'll see that in a sec. Are they, sometimes I say wet or dry. I think maybe humid is the best word to use. Are they humid? or dry okay that's it now so the good news is the names of these are all in the reference table i think i have it down here there it is this is in the reference table i'll show you the page when we wrap this thing up this little box is on on one of the pages okay so it gives you here's what the symbol looks like and they're they're very picky about it being lowercase uppercase i'll show you that here's what the name of it is the thing that we'll have to remember is what are those properties but they'll make sense if you understand what these words are so we'll fill that in up here it's a two letter system the air masses will either be c a c p c t m t m p the first letter is always lowercase i don't know the history of this i don't know why that is a thing but it is so we'll obey either c c stands for continental which means it comes from a continent or M stands for maritime. Now, sometimes that word is new for folks at our grade level. Uh, maritime. Think of um, other words with a similar root, like marine, the marines, a marina. Um, I mean, if you've been to Oswego, there's a maritime museum. All of that stuff has to do with water, and particularly oceans. How about marine biology? They all have the same roots. The Seattle Mariners have that like uh, Gordon's fisherman looking dude for a for a mascot, right? It all has to do with water. So if we got land versus water, well, guess what the properties are going to be? Properties are going to be that if it's a sea air mass, a continental air mass, it's going to be dry. And if it's an M, a marine, a maritime air mass, it's going to be humid. That's it. So the first letter talks about the humidity, talks about the moisture level of the air. The second letter, and again, for whatever particular reason, the second letter on all of these is, and again, it's always in your reference tables too, so don't screw that up. Just like open your reference tables and, and see the right way to do it. It's always uh, uppercase. And either P for polar. What's it like at the poles? T for tropical. What's it like at the tropics? A is rare. I also didn't put a blank there for some reason. Arctic. What's it like in Arctic? All right, so polar. What's coming into upstate New York right now? Um, it's going to be cold air. Because it's cold near the poles. Polar air masses are cold. If air comes from the poles, it's cold. Uh, tropical. It's going to be warm. And Arctic, we don't get these a ton. Uh, and I usually say frigid here, to just into, or just like real cold. Um, if you've heard on the news, this was a couple years ago when it was just, it was really cold for like a week. They talked about a polar vortex and blah, blah, blah. We had like really cold polar air make it down. So the, they'll happen once in a while and we'll say it's it's ridiculously cold. But our, our average cold, what we're used to here in upstate New York, I would say is, is generally going to be polar air masses. So your job. I'm not going to do all these for you, but I'm going to watch your notes and make sure you're doing your work. Big Brother's always watching. Is to, in these five spots, and again, I'll do the first one for you. Tell me, what is a CA, or a Continental Arctic Air Mass like? Continental is dry, comes from land. Arctic is frigid. There you go. Can you do the other four? Press pause now. Do those. Welcome back. Thank you for listening. Um, so source regions, which is really just 
air masses again, but it's like, where did those air masses come from? First, we have to make sure we uh, what we understand what, the, what, it, what an air mass is. So this is just kind of stealing the definition from up above. Uh, let's make it a little bit more like... A little bit more friendly. A blob of air with similar characteristics. All right, air comes in from a region. It brings its characteristics with it, which is what this line does. Second, air masses have the properties of the regions they come from. Cold, dry air comes from cold, dry places, and that's it. So what is going to affect us here in Pulaski, New York? Um, I'll try to play with my zoom here a little bit. I know that these Chromebooks are small, and you're looking at a little tiny thing. Let's uh, switch to our pen and we'll see, you know what, I'll use green for Pulaski for some reason. We're right there on the eastern end of Lake Ontario, right? There's a dot for where we live. So what air masses might affect us? I'll go to blue for air that comes down out of Canada. Now this is what blew into town. Again, what was that? Monday night. It wasn't too bad over the weekend. Monday evening, all of a sudden, uh, winds picked up, and we'll have to get. We, and if you've ever heard of a front, a cold front, or a warm front, that's very much tied in with this. That moment that that cold air swept into your neighborhood would be the cold front, and then you know behind it is all of the cold air. Now, yeah, we'll have to get into that later, but let's just stick with air masses for today. So up here, Canadian air is continental polar, little c, big P. Dry, cold air. I mean, yesterday, or what day? What day did I tell you? I had to go outside. The afternoon classes said you got to go outside. Um, where it was just, it was like very sunny, clear. That was good, like northern Midwestern to Canadian air. Very clear, very sunny, very cold, very dry. The ground was like frozen hard, no moisture in the air. It's what it's like. I mean, if you can picture, if you, if I said right now, what's it probably like up there in Canada? It was like that. It was like that was uh, two days ago with those very sunny skies. What's coming into town right now with this nor'easter, like a car wash thingy, is like spinning and slinging this air at us from out of the northeast is going to be maritime. Polar. Still cold air because we're it's coming out of the north but now cold and wet air. That's why we're going to see today more clouds, more precipitation in the form of snow, um, particularly if you go a little bit south, if you go south of us. Just because of the way that this nor'easter lined up, it's not going to hit Lake Ontario too hard. But get down into the Finger Lakes to Pennsylvania, and, and yeah, they're getting it. I bet you there's some school closures down there. Okay, what else? What happens a lot in the summer? I'm going to switch to red. The biggest ones that we really get here are the CPs, that those are occasional, and then these guys that air gets sucked up out of the Gulf. So this is going to be a maritime tropical. So that's going to be warmer, more humid air coming up out of the Gulf of Mexico and impacting us. This is really the, like the battle of summer is that the MT air blows into town. It's warm and wet a little bit. Then the boom, the cooler, drier air comes often comes with a thunderstorm. We'll talk about that when we get to fronts. Um, and it can come from over here as well. And I mean, Florida is like so small that you can't really get a, a good, like Florida is basically entirely humid too. It's like surrounded by oceans. This is all going to be maritime air coming out of here. Even like, I can't say, Oh, there's a little bit of land right there. So if that comes up, it's going to be dry air. It doesn't really matter. It's too small. So how about that warm, dry air? If we want to get continental tropicals, it's got to come from a dry, hot place. Northern Mexico, Southwestern United States is all desert like, right? That's not really going to make it to Pulaski. By the time that these systems roll through that push these air masses around, this air gets blown into more humid places before it affects us. We really tend not to get that air here. We're not in that kind of climate. 
it's humid here. Um, and then again, we can say that it's rare. And I know you see a lot of water up here. It's just that when we get into um, how humidity works in air, this very cold air isn't really conducive to getting a lot of humidity down to us. So even if I'm coming out of some water here, it's so cold and so frozen that that air occasionally does push down over us when everything lines up just right and gets us real, real, real cold. All right, what do you think? Sound good? Let's look at the reference tables quick. Um, so we're going to be on page 13 for this stuff. I mean, this is a, page 13 is a very heavy weather page. Um, I was tempted to throw this in today because it's, it's kind of so basic, but maybe I'll save it. Temperature scale. So if you want to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius or Kelvin's, you can do that. There's an equation to do it too, but this just lets us like slide back and forth. When we talk about pressure, there's going to be two systems, millibars and inches. And all these are, I'll do a more detailed video. It's like, look at the number here, go over to that side. What's the number? It's really not too bad. Should the, one of those ever pop up on you? Um, the station model, I haven't decided yet. Maybe our mission, whoop, laggy computers here. This may be our mission uh, before Christmas break. We'll see to figure that out. Today was air masses. And again, there's all the names of them. Your job is to know the properties. Continentals are dry, Arctics are frigid, polars are cold, tropicals are warm, maritimes are wet. When they come in, the leading edge of them is a front, and we have a lot to do with fronts, so don't worry about it right now. Um, and then the symbols for those. These symbols go with the station models when we start figuring out how to label weather events on a map. All right, I think I'll wrap it up there and figure out maybe a couple of questions here to throw at you and say uh good luck folks keep it up hope you're doing okay happy thursday i think i'm actually allowed to be back tomorrow we'll see take care